Yes. Okay, we're going to be talking about some of the electronic warfare techniques that are currently going on between the Ukraine and the Russians. Go on, next. Uh, I'm a member of a professional society called the Association of Old Crows. This goes back to World War II and is based on the idea that a crow flies through the sky, not because he's the fastest or that's the sharpest claws, he flies through the skies because he's the wiliest. Okay, next. Uh, this is a, a UK drone with a collection of uh, my antennas around the bottom. So you, you can see a whole collection of uh, exponential slot antennas around the bottom. They never told me exactly what they're doing with it, but they're probably looking at Russian X-band radar systems. Next. We're gonna, we'll start out with a little bit more vintage. This is a Russian SA-2 missile. A lot of these were shot at our airplanes during, World War, uh, during the Vietnam conflict. The way these were controlled was effectively a radio-controlled airplane. They would fire the missile, look at the plane on radar, and try and make the two dots become one. When defending Moscow, the, it used a tactical nuke warhead, which was close enough was good. Fortunately, they only gave the North Vietnamese the practice warheads. The standard procedure for dealing with these was they were sending up tones to control it. So the radar operator on the B-52s would detect when the radar had locked up on them. They would then go over to the control frequency and start recording. Let's assume that as the missile was fired, the first command sent to it was left. They would wait until the missile got a little bit closer to the plane and then transmit back left, 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 left. Usually it missed. Next. Uh, there is the antenna on the bottom of the B-52, which uh, was transmitting left, 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 left. That's called a scimitar antenna because it looks a lot like a scimitar sword. Next. This is a much larger version of that same antenna. You really didn't have any Tom Cruises uh, flying for the North Vietnamese. When a MiG took off, he was under ground control. An operator on the ground would say, take off, fly to this altitude, come to this heading, come to this heading, release missiles. This missile, this air, this antenna was used to transmit noise on the channels to the pilots. So these were jamming the earphones of the pilots and the pilots didn't know how to operate on their own. Next. So now we come to modern day. Ivan just really doesn't throw anything away. This is the launcher for their latest one, the S-500 missile. Next. They, they, they still do the same thing. It's still a radio controlled airplane controlled from the ground. The only thing they have done is instead of sending a tone, they send a digital command. So now we record the digital command and repeat it real fast. Okay, next. We'll talk a bit about GPS and GPS uh, jamming and spoofing. This is a simple little GPS receiver. The most sensitive part, the easiest thing to mess up is that antenna. Underneath that antenna is a low noise amplifier. That low noise amplifier is pulling three volts and a couple of milliamps. We're talking thousands of a watt. You give this any strong signal and that amplifier saturates and stop working. This is an effect I've described as wearing a hearing aid to a rock concert. You're just gonna overload it. So any strong signal will take out that LNA and that's the easiest way to make a GPS receiver stop working. Next. Uh, this is an antenna that I supply to the uh, Ukraine. I've got about 940 antennas in the Ukraine right now. You use the bottom antenna, directional antenna, and you find the Russian GPS jammer to about 20 degrees. The pattern of the antenna is uh, there in the middle. You then switch to the top antenna, which is out of phase, and you null on it. Go to the next. Next. 
Okay. So there's the pattern of the broad one, which you use to find the general idea where it is. Next. And the next one produces a sharp null. You get the sharp null on the target. You now know where he is to one degree. You can now send some mortar shells down that line or uh, get a couple of really good riflemen and say, just go on that line right there. When you find some guys, start shooting. And that's how uh, taking care of the, the, well, as far as working on uh, finding the jammers for the GPS. Next. Uh, now we'll get a little bit into spoofing. Spoofing is a little bit more complex. Uh, the normal procedure is you're going to now pretend to be a GPS satellite and send out a signal uh, pretending to be GPS. You can do this with two signals. You really need to use three. And the signals are incredibly complex. To generate three on one transmitter can be done. It's being done, but it is not simplistic. I recently saw a demonstration where they had a drone fly through a three-dimensional base, and all the time the drone thought it was in a stable hover. Next. Okay. No, nope. back up. Okay, back up one. Okay. Okay, we're back to GPS antennas again. These little ceramic antennas have a very broad pattern and they come around all the way around to the horizon. In fact, most of the GPS satellites you detect when you're looking at the patterns are near the horizon. The problem is that the uh, jammers and or the spoofers are gonna usually be on the ground. So what we really wanna do is stop receiving signals from the ground. Next. So we put a ground plane under this antenna. This can be a sheet PC board, sheet aluminum. You want a ground plane that's somewhere around four to six inches across underneath this antenna. And you now get this for the antenna pattern. You'll note that you're receiving near zero signal from the horizon. You've lost a couple of satellites, but you've also lost the jammers or the spoofers. Next. So this would be an idea of how you'd be losing the ones that are near the edge, but you're still getting all the middle ones. Now, oh, over on the left, you're seeing where you're get, seeing the satellites. If you can get to the GPS information itself, you're going to be normally picking up a half dozen, maybe eight satellites. But now suddenly you're gonna have two or three which are a hundred times stronger. If you've got any smarts in your GPS system, where did these signals that are a hundred times stronger come from? Be very suspicious that I'm being spoofed. Next. Ah, this is a Russian artillery counterfire radar. Well, uh, it's another direction finding system we've worked with for them. This looks at artillery shells usually. Next. Artillery counterfire is a technique that goes back to World War II. You shoot some artillery shells at me. I look at them on radar, do some calculations, and before your shells even hit the ground, mine are coming back at you. Artillery guys now use a technique called shoot and scoot. <laughs> so. Next. So what I have is a variation of this antenna that does direction finding on that radar. Now your first shells go for the radar, not the guns. Next. This is a technique I've been uh, talking with them about. This is a German vehicle from World War II and it had those big loops on the top. For decades, I thought that loop was for holding a camouflage net or something like that. No, that is the NVIS antenna, or sometimes called an NVIR antenna, near vertical incident radiator. Next. It gets down on an extremely low frequency. Now we're talking about radio waves, which are 100, 150 meters long. And because the antenna is only a few meters off the ground, the radio wave cannot travel sideways when it leaves. It can only go straight up. 
So the radio wave leaves that loop, goes straight up, hits the ionosphere, reflects, turn around, and comes straight back down. This works out very well for tactical communications. Somebody a thousand miles away really can't hear your signal. Somebody a thousand miles away can't jam you. So by taking all their short wave systems, which they're starting to have trouble with jam being jammed, and making the di uh, dipole antennas instead of high, only a meter or two off the ground, they can now use them for tactical communications. And as I told the guys over there, it worked fine for the Germans the last times they were in the Ukraine. Okay. Some uh, other views of German vehicles that use that. Okay. And again, it go works great for tactical communications. The uh, VHF band between 100 and 200 megahertz is heavily monitored and heavily jammed by the uh, Russians. Okay, next. Here's another program we're working on. Uh, this one actually goes back a few years. This is a proximity, few, proximity radar for a 50 caliber bullet. The project was a less than lethal 50 caliber bullet. <laughs> An interesting concept in itself. It was a polycarbonate 50 cal bullet. We had a long section of air conditioning duct full of little cotton balls so we could capture them and try again later. But this is a small radar. They, like I say, it goes in the nose of a 50 caliber bullet. And uh, that was my design and fun building. Next. Uh, this is where we're actually doing some testing on a test range. When you have explosive test range, they get rather picky about having any uh, electrical voltage or electrical wires around. So this is a 50 caliber single shot gun controlled by compressed air. Next. Uh, next thing that we're, okay, back up one, well, back up two. What we're uh, now having a, a project doing is attempting to use this same little radar to detect a drone and have a 50 caliber bullet that explodes. So now we're gonna have a 50 cals that you fire at a drone. If it passes within a meter or two of the drone, it triggers, goes off, and fragmentates. So you don't have to actually hit the drone with a 50 caliber bullet, just get close, and this will be used as the proximity fuse. Next. Okay, again. Uh, this is one thing I got to thinking. Like I said, I have 940 antennas in the Ukraine, and most of them have my ham call letters on this. I, I, I got to thinking, maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> so uh, I'm now making them without my call letters on them. Next. This is an upcoming project. This is the seeker for what's called the Neptune missile. The Russians call it the Sinx missile. And this is normally an anti-ship missile. It kind of looks like a World War II V-1 buzz bomb. Carries a pretty good warhead, and the Ukrainians have used it to sink on a lot of uh, Soviet hardware out in the Black Sea. This is what's called a monopulse radar. A monopulse radar has four antennas, effectively. One high, one low, one left, one right. It sends out a pulse and then listens to the reflection. I now know the distance to the target. Then by comparing the signal level in the four antennas, I get a vector to the target. I don't know where it is along the vector, but I get a vector. I turn on that vector until all four antennas are the same strength. I'm now going straight for the target. The way to, uh, shall we say, decoy these is you have an antenna, you receive the pulse, you then have a 60 dB gain amplifier and another antenna to send the pulse back. So now you can have just a little itty bitty box and I do one for the uh, US Navy and on radar, my little box looks just like a Boeing 727. The customer in this case, interestingly, is South Korea. Apparently, the uh, Russians have s sold a lot, and I mean a lot of these, to North Korea and the South wants to know some ways to uh, decoy these guys. Next. So, 
I'm open to questions, snide remarks, insults. Any questions? This is a surprise. A oh, go ahead. A lot of practice. How do I design my antennas? Yes, for, for the mic, understand. I've uh, developed a roughly 1,100 different printed circuit board antennas for a variety of applications. Most are done on a network analyzer and my antenna range. There are big holes in HFSS. I've got three families of antennas that Hewlett Packard's quarter million dollar package cannot simulate. So, uh, um, is there a, so uh, typically I do them by hand because I can build and test one in less time than you can set up your HFSS boundary conditions. Any other questions? Yes? What, what are they using for screening uh, detection? Uh, I helped them do some antennas for one of the screening sections. They're using uh, Chinese drones and they're putting 10 to 20 watt amplifiers on the video net, uh, links so that they can see them from the distance. I had a bunch of 5.8 gig antennas left over from a plan to Wi-Fi the city of uh, Plano. And we just put up a 5.8 gig antenna up in the air, put an amplifier to an audio amp, and when we hear a lot of buzzing coming, we know a drone is coming. So we're listening to the 10 to 20 watt video links. Any other questions? Yes. Do what now? Uh, the vast majority of the ones I have been uh, shipping to the Ukraine were made in the United States. Uh, I'm, I'm selling the antennas right over there. The only antenna which was made in China are the uh, GPS direction finding antennas because they could do them faster and get them back to me in a week. They're faster coming out of China than coming out of parts in Texas, but that's a confusion factor. Yes. Okay, on the 5.8 gig video links, can we use that for direction finding and for a small missile? Uh, it could be done. Right now, we just simply detect that the 5.8 gig video, because it's a commonly available unit and they're putting high power amplifiers in China and shipping them over. Uh, it could be done. Uh, it's, it's easier just to hear it and see the buzzing and then point a 20 millimeter at them or something. Another question? Yeah. Yes. Um, I have not, I have been offered a trip to the Ukraine and I have politely just declined. It was during the winter time and being a guy from Texas, I'm not used to 50 below. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, we do a lot of Zoom calls and most of the people I'm working with are using laboratories in Poland. So they're not actually in the Ukraine themselves. DHL to uh, the Ukraine is challenging. About your safety? I think that was the question. That's why I took my call letters off of the antennas. <laughs> and I guess uh, any other questions? Then we'll finish up with one of my favorite jokes. Next? Yes. All right.